I'm Dan Farber, Editor-in-Chief of CBSNews.com, and I am joined by Brian Montopoli, our political reporter, who was up all night covering these midterm elections. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, to me, the, the big question at the end of the day is, who's going to control the Senate and the House in November? So what does this midterm election, how do you read the so-called tea leaves uh, from last night? The key thing to focus on from last night is Christine O'Donnell's win. Christine O'Donnell's win in Delaware, she's a Tea Party candidate, it means that Republicans have gone from having what was expected to be a safe win for them to probably losing that seat. Don't ever underestimate the power of we the people. They need 10 seats to take the Senate, and that just got a lot harder because of the Tea Party and Christine O'Donnell in Delaware. And how does it look in the House? Uh, we talked about the Senate, but is the House in, in jeopardy? Is the, are the Democrats in jeopardy of losing the House? In the House, it's a 39-seat margin right now. I think it's safe to say the Democrats are going to lose at least 25 seats. A lot of these seats were, were seats they probably shouldn't have won in 2006 and 2008 in big Democratic years. Those are going to go back to the Republicans. The fight now is whether it's going to be 25 seats or whether it's going to be 50 or even 60 seats that the Republicans take. And that's what's being battled now. Now let's do a hypothetical. Let's say that the Republicans do win control of the House and the Senate. What does that do to President Obama's agenda and, and to all the legislation that's in play? Republicans in the Senate have been able to block legislation because of the filibuster. They're going to have more votes now and they're going to be able to continue to do that. The House is interesting. If the, if the Republicans take the House, there's uh, Daryl Issa, a Republican in California, and he is going to, he has said, I'm going to subpoena, there's going to be investigations. I think you can expect a Republican, con a Republican a House. Subpoena investigations into? Into a number of things that the Obama administration has done. I mean, like ISIS, the health care. Sure, health care. I mean, they're going to try to defund health care. They're going to be investigating all sorts of moves, whether the White House acted improperly in certain races, uh, the Joe Sestak race. Uh, the, the point is going to be to slow down everything the Democrats want to do. The GOP is not going to have an affirmative agenda. It's going to have a slow down the Democrats agenda, which is really what they've been campaigning on and, and what they think is an effective message. So how does the Tea Party and these independents play into this notion where you have these two parties who are at odds? I mean, what impact would the Tea Party or, or, or these independents have in terms of that end, end game scenario? Well, I mean, if you look at some of the people that might come in, Rand Paul, Sharon Angle, these are people in the Senate. These are not mainstream Republicans who want to play by the rules. Many people embrace my value system because they know I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to steal, I'm not going to cheat, I don't make deals. These are what you might think of as Jim DeMint Republicans, people that are going to stand strong to very conservative, traditional uh, Tea Party ideas. And that's going to really, really throw a wrench in the Senate. The Senate is traditionally at least been a very collegial place and these are not people who are coming in to be collegial so it's going to be very interesting to see within the GOP how some of these new people get along with the old guard. Oh great. Thanks Brian. Absolutely. I've been speaking with Brian Montopoli, the political reporter for CBSNews.com. I'm Dan Farber. Thanks for watching.